this is kind of like neutral territory. Definitely, I definitely. You know, so uh, I'm going to try to kick your ass. Okay. Oh, those are fighting words, Cody. Welcome back to the channel, folks. This week we're doing another Hickory versus Modern match play. I'm at Farmingbury Hills Golf Course in Wolcott, Connecticut. This is a really cool nine-hole course. It's kind of a hidden gem around here tucked in the mountains. And if you didn't know we had mountains here in Connecticut, I'm going to show you some today. Designer's unknown on this course, but the current layout dates back to 1930, and it's got some interesting quirks I'm going to show you along the way. So here's the matchup between me and Cody. You've seen us play before in these matchups. We're pretty evenly matched, so we're not giving each other any strokes. And here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stuart and Jacoby. I'm using the five authentic irons that I've been using lately with the single plane swing, but there's an exception with the brassy I'm going to talk about as we go. And here are the Callaway Mavericks that Cody's going to be using to take me on. Here's the scorecard. We're playing from a combination of white and blues that adds up to about 2,900 yards. And everything starts with number one, par four, 325 yards. Got a blind tee shot here to start, but there's plenty of room to the right and left for those errant tee shots that us high handicappers are known for early in a round You're good. You're good. and uh, later in the round too. So I mentioned I'm using a different brassy for this round. I had been using authentic clubs 100% with the single plane swing up to this point, but uh, figured because of the distance advantage that Cody was going to have with his modern clubs off the tee, that it might be a good idea for me to use a um, replica, the replica yes. Hagen splice neck made by Louisville Golf that I've been using for a long time. Uh, only because I was not consistent quite yet with my brassies, authentic brassies at this point. Okay. You're all right. Oh, I got too chunky. I chunked it. Too chunky. So Cody having a little bit of trouble getting up to the green here. Give me an opportunity to take advantage. Here's a closer look at the single plane chipping technique using the Hagen Iron Man sand wedge. You have an open stance oh, no. and just kind of accelerate through the ball. I didn't get under it quite enough there and ended up blading it a bit across the green. But if you've been watching my course vlogs lately, you've seen me become much more consistent with my chipping and putting using the single plane approach. Here though, I'm giving Cody an opportunity right back to get into this match. Coming down to the wire here, and it's going to be a putting contest to see who takes away this first hole. Didn't read that well at all, but left myself this short gimme for a six. And I'm expecting Cody's going to knock his in. But no! Hickory Hacker takes an advantage going into number two. Par four, 419 yards, dogleg right, another blind tee shot. Working with an early lead here. Just trying to play smart. Plenty of room on the left there, so I'm okay even though I'm off the fairway. But then Cody does oh, this, wow. and this is the big advantage that he's going to have over my Bob hickory clubs. If shot. he gets a hold of one, he can hit it pretty far, and he got that one right down the pipe. So I got some work to do already. This is the Tom Stewart J-Iron, probably not the right club to use out of the rough. I've had this happen to me a few times now with this club, and I probably should have just used the mashie to extract it out of that rough. And I'm using the mashie here from the fairway. And that was a nice shot. Hopefully you'll be able to see that, but it bounced up on the green and then toward the back. So I'm in good shape here, but Cody's pretty far already and just hitting his second shot. Got a hold of that one pretty well pretty too, too, but that one snuck behind the tree and ended up on the hill on the right side of the green. So kind of a touchy chip shot up the hill. Safe, safe play. But he made it up there okay. It's another good angle on the uh, single plane chip. Would have liked that to run out a little bit more. We're back to a putting contest, though, to take this hole. And that was a good putt. Cody was using a brand new tailor-made spider putter in this round, and that explains some of the early misses that he had short. So I'm in with another gimme six, but I don't think Cody's going to miss this one for his five. Nope. 
All right, so we're back to all square going into number three. Par four, 310 yards. This one goes downhill after the tee. Cody got a hold of that one. So after I watched him do that, I figured I would try to do the same thing, which is always a mistake. Ended up over swinging just enough to hook that into the weeds. So I got some trouble. So I'm using my ambidextrous putter that I cut the shaft down on. I've used this in a few course vlogs lately, and I really love that club for those kinds of shots. I have to do a feature on that at some point, because I think that's a really cool little club that I made, if I do say so myself. It wasn't quite what I was planning with the mashie, but it worked out okay. Ended up just off the green in the rough. And as nice as that drive was for Cody, it put him under a tree, so he had some trouble getting to the green from there. That was a decent chip, but it ended up running out to the back of the green. So I've got my opportunity here to take this hole. Step one was chipping it close, which is what I did. The biggest issue Cody was having with his putter was distance control and uh, just didn't know how hard he could hit the ball. So that explains these two putts here. So I've got my chance to win this hole now. Just didn't read that right. And I was frustrated that I missed that one. Another gimme six. But Cody just misses his, so I take one back. Number four is the signature hole. It's a par four, 373 yards. Uh, an actual road bisects the hole, but you can see you're way above the hole here. You can't see anything, really. You can't even see the fairway. So totally blind shot, looking at the mountains, hoping you don't hit it short and into the road. You can actually hear the traffic below you when you're at the tee, so it's a bit of an unnerving tee shot, but a beautiful nice one. Shot. And both Cody and I navigated it pretty well today. I'm in the fairway here with my second shot. That was another nice strike using the Tom Morris mashie. Cody hit his so far that he was in the rough, and that actually put him at a disadvantage because he couldn't get clean contact on that nice. shot. So this is the Robert Condi mashie niblick that I had some issues with uh, when I was playing at Montague up in Vermont. That was a pretty good shot though. But that was like a 1 out of 10 shot with that club, so I, I, I've since sold that club. Meanwhile, Cody and I are pretty much matching each other shot for shot here and ending up in the same spots. Both have pretty much the same putt here going back down. This was a tricky green for us. I had the advantage though of Cody putting first so that I could see where the putts were going and uh, still didn't start that one high enough, nor did I hit it hard enough. I took the lesson on that putt though. And that was a good effort. So I'm in with another six. So Cody's got to hit this putt to have the hole, but he can't do it. And I go up two holes, I think, for the first time in my match play career. It takes us to number five. It's a par four, 373 yards. And just like that, our twosome becomes a threesome with the addition of Gene the Amazing, a local magician and entertainer. The play was a little slow ahead of us, so Gene just joined up with us, and we're glad he did. He was a lot of fun. So this is one of the quirky holes here at Farmingbury Hills. You've got an option of two different greens to go to. Uh, the first is straight ahead and it's a severely elevated green and then the other is kind of a dogleg right that is also an elevated green. Uh, this is where this, this course is kind of fun for 18 holes because by using the different uh, white tee, blue tee combos along with, in this instance, two different greens, you can make basically, you know, several different holes out of this one hole. So 
One of the quirky things that I think is pretty cool about this course. Meanwhile, I'm having some trouble on this hole. I actually like going to the elevated green that's straight ahead off the tee rather than this one. Uh, but that might just be because I was playing this pretty poorly today. Still, I'm two up, so I feel like if I give this one up, I know what the next hole is, and i um, pretty comfortable with my ability to keep this lead, which probably was a, you know, a sign that things could go awry, but we'll see. All right, so that putt, didn't read that putt very well. And uh, Cody's just got two short ones here to sew this hole up. And he's going to do that with this one right here. So I give one back. Still one up, though, going into number six. Par three, 166 yards. We're playing this from the uh, basically from the tips. Gene's going to show us how it's done. That's a good, that's a little good cart bounce. path action. Oh. Might be a little magic in there too. I don't know, but it ended up about <laughs> within 10 feet of the hole. That was outstanding. So Cody's going to see if he can do the same thing here. Oh, that one takes a bounce too. Oh. Friendly bounce. Came up short of the green, but could have been a lot worse. And let's see if I can. We can go three for three with pinball action off the tee here. Didn't mean to take a line that far right. Ended up clipping a branch. I think you're, you might make it. It might land on the... Uh, uh, yeah, couldn't tell where it landed. We'll see in a second. Meanwhile, Cody's short of the hole, but uh, that was a pretty good pitch up to the green. So I did get a good bounce off the tree. Uh, we all got lucky on this hole. But then I got really unlucky. That was probably the one spot that I could not land the ball and, and have something good happen. That was right on the apron, basically, and it took a really bad bounce and then sent it across the green. So what looked like an opportunity for me to take the uh, advantage back from Cody um, turns into another putting contest, and we're destined to have this hole. And my shot there. Didn't read the putt well, though. Now Cody's got his shot, did the same thing I did. So, as I said, we were destined to have this hole from the start, and that's what happened. But, Get in. Oh, oh, great birdie. Amazing. Nice hole, Gene. All right, number seven, par four, 401 yards. Got some water to contend with off the tee. That was just a bad swing. Ended up putting that way right into the junk, and uh, well, it's kicking down though. I saw it kick yeah, down. I, did too. I appreciate the optimism there, Gene, but uh, that that wasn't going to be good for me. All Cody has to do is put a nice, easy swing on it. I think he swung a little too hard on that, but it went straight, even though he popped it up. So he's in the fairway, okay. I did not find that shot, so I'm sitting at my third shot here, which is unfortunate. That's a pretty good shot there to get myself back in the fairway but now I'm playing catch up Cody got under that one a little bit chunked it and uh, didn't get the distance he was hoping to out of that but this was a real nice shot <laughs> great shot yeah so Putting the pressure on me now. I really have to get up and down here. And that's not going to do it. Yep, still going. That was a nice putt. Too little, too late. And Cody takes it back to all square. So number eight's a par four, 315 yards. Got a nice little match going on at this point. This is another one of the holes where you've got multiple tee box options to kind of create a different hole. You can either play it as a par four or you can play it as a par three with a, you know, obviously a tee box that's closer. A 
little stinger there that I got lucky with. Ended up curling back into the fairway. So Cody's pretty far ahead of me, but uh, I'm in the fairway. Got a good look at the green. Pretty good contact there. Just came up a little short. Cody's got a shorter shot here going in. But he ends up getting under that a little bit too much too and ends up in the same spot pretty much as I was. Uh oh, right by me. Yeah, almost in the same spot. So we got a chipping and putting contest coming up here. Another bad hop right in front of the green there. Kind of took me away from the hole. See if Cody can capitalize. And that was real nice. I tip my cap to Cody on that one. Great chip. Puts himself in a nice spot for his par putt. And I got to hit this. It's a good effort, just not enough. And Cody was starting to get the rhythm with his spider by this point. And gets his first clutch putt with it. So now, Cody's one up, going into number nine, par four, 431 yards. I believe you say that the match has gone dormy at this point because Cody can't lose, basically. He can only tie. I have to win this hole to send us to a sudden death putt off. I'm kind of feeling that stress here off the tee and, and overswung again. And there's that hook. A lot of room over there, but it's in the rough. So you're going to lose distance with this shot. And I just tried to get it back into the fairway. Cody had a little bit of tree trouble here, but uh, enough room to keep it low and advance it, which is what he did. And this was my opportunity to kind of get back in the hole, but I ended up doing this. Just a bad shot all around. Went up on the hill, close to the clubhouse, and Cody took advantage. Oh, good shot. Hit an outstanding shot there. So I'm above the green here with an awkward chip, trying to use the hill. This actually turned out okay, but, you know, in a match play event where you got to win the hole, you don't want to be screwing around with experimental shots like this late. But I still had a sliver of hope if I could hit this putt. But I ended up dragging the putter behind the ball and coming up short. So now all Cody has to do is two putt to win. Gives himself a little bit of work with that one. Meanwhile, Gene holes out to wrap up a nice round for him. And here's Cody to win the match. And he does it with another clutch putt. Two in a row to wrap the match up and come from behind to win. Great round, Cody. Thanks for watching this Hickory vs. Modern match play. This was the last one of 2021. If you want to see more of these in 2022, leave me a comment below. And uh, if you have any suggestions on how you want me to do them different, let me know that too. I like putting them together, but only if you like watching them. And one quick note before I go. If you're in Connecticut and you need a magician, make sure you check out Gene the Amazing and let him know the Hickory Hacker sent you. All right, that'll do it for this week. See you next time.